Welcome back to Mushroom Adventures. In this episode, I'm going to talk all about supplemented sterilized sawdust blocks. You see all my bags? I'll get into that here in a moment. But like I said before, this is the method that I'm going to instead of pasteurizing cottonseed hulls and straw. I think it's better. It'll have better results, you'll see. Um, much cleaner, much more orderly. So let's get right into it. Here you can see the bags of sterilized sawdust, wheat bran, and also plaster. I'll give the recipe here soon. They have taken about 10 days to fully colonize. Now I inoculated almost all of this with grain spawn. Only maybe about, oh, a third, one quarter of a quart jar worth. Not really much at all. And it only still took 10 days. I mixed it up once at the initial uh, makeup and never mixed it again. You can see it colonizes pretty well throughout it, even with not too much grain spawn. I initially tried using a liquid culture to inoculate these because I read it work, but I noticed it didn't work probably because I mixed the bags up after I inoculated it. While I took another couple of these bags, you know, I don't know if you can see here, there is some uh, mycelium growing on the side here, and there, there's some mycelium growing on the other side of this one too. These ones I did not mix up. They're still the compressed block of sawdust, and I just hit the liquid culture right in the side of the bag and let it collect in one spot. My thoughts are probably that if you mix the bag up with the liquid culture, it spreads it out too thin, and there's not an area of sawdust that's wet enough to uh, be adequate for growth. It kind of just semi dries it out a little bit all over. And maybe if you had a, a greater water content makeup of the sawdust, it would improve things. But I follow the recipe that I know that works and you don't want to get the sawdust too wet. But if you're going to use liquid culture, um, don't mix up the bag and let it go to about a, a three inch wide patch of mycelium before you mix it up and distribute it. And then it will fully colonize, no problem. If you saw the two bags down the basement that uh, didn't have a whole lot of pins around it, those two bags were actually made from liquid culture, but I mixed them up. But the only spots that actually took off were where pieces of the agar wedge were left over in the culture. And I actually mixed those bags up twice, and they still worked out. So that shows you how forgiving the uh, sawdust tech is. Some of these bags, too, are agrocybadgerita, which is the piopino mushroom we'll get into later. It colonizes a little bit slower, or at least has a little bit slower of a start. But you can see it's uh, growing throughout the sawdust just fine. Now, I don't know if I've mentioned before, but you can really change the recipe out of the sawdust bags because you're sterilizing it. It doesn't matter how nutritious the uh, food it is in it, as long as the moisture content is right, it'll be uh, suitable to grow the mushrooms on it. Now these only are made with a 20% bran, wheat bran content, compared to uh, the sawdust. And that's about standard when making them. If you have some mushrooms like shiitakes though, they can only tolerate maybe like 15% bran, and anything higher will call mutations in the fruits and other problems. But as for these king oysters, I've seen people take it up past 30% bran and get some huge results. So that's probably what I'm going to do in the future. Plus, I'm going to do some experimentation using some alfalfa in the bags because I've seen how it really gives things a boost to the cottonseed hulls. Um, you can see down here, there's some bags I just made where the grain is recovering well and it'll be 10 days from now when it's fully done and after 10 days after full colonization I'm going to wait about oh another five to seven days before I put it in the basement because you want the mycelium to get a real a real good establishment on the sawdust let it build its home let it store up uh, energy in the mycelial network prepare for fruiting 
So these are going to go down in the basement here in about a week or so and get the same treatment with the bag cut off and hopefully they'll pin just fine right through the hole instead of throughout the bag. Well, my first ideas on how to make these bags opened up with the PVC rings. Looks like it's not going to work with these king oyster mushrooms. Maybe some other mushrooms like blue oysters. But the problem is that the mushroom grows so hard and dense up inside the ring that uh, some of them will slide out if I break it behind the ring. But most of them, is like you can see here, I can only get it to break right outside the ring. I couldn't get the, all the tissue that's up in there to come out. And to get it out, you'd have to take the ring off and yank it out with your hands, then put it all back together, which is not what I want to do because it's too much work. But I've already come up with a good solution. I'm getting these uh, sections of pipe insulation, you see. This is the, the cheapest they got. But you see it's a, a tube, it's stiff for the most part. It also has a split where uh, you see it comes off part. Now I've cut these into one inch sections again. And what I've done is just treated it the same way, only this way, even though the hole is a little bit smaller because it's the, the same one and a half inch, you can see here, but you know, really I want a larger hole than the two inch, or larger hole than these would make. But since it's going to expand, it can get as big as it wants. And I'll show you how I'm putting these together. I'm leaving a bit more slack, so I'm cutting in the center of the filter patch on these bags. Then I got some of these thinner, weaker rubber bands. I go grab one of the rings in the band, kind of scrunch the bag together as best you can. Get the section of foam around it. Yeah, I found these just walking through Home Depot trying to think of a material that would work and as soon as I saw this I knew this this was the perfect idea so with this first rubber band I'm going to actually double it up because it's weaker if you have a strong rubber band you won't have to do this I'll get it around doubled up now I use one hand to hold a rubber band to the uh, section of foam, I'm going to do the same thing and pull the areas of slack of the bag outward. That way there's no, there's as little open space inside the bag as possible. Kind of rearrange if we got to. That's pretty good. I see I have quite a bit of slack on the outside, which is what I want. Grab another rubber band. And then fold the plastic back. And I find it helps too to fold it back and then fold it upward behind the ring. And then get the band on there. That way the, the plastic doesn't try to fight the band off as much badly. Now you can see that the it's not much of a hole at the moment, so take your thumbs and if your hands aren't you know clean sanitized with some alcohol, you know, do it beforehand as well. But to get your thumbs in there and then kind of open it up. And there you see it's a fairly good sized hole and it'll allow it to get bigger. So it'll be very interesting to see how that works. You see too that I had a problem fiddling with the one bags on one side and a couple bags on the other side fell off. You know, that's bad. So I've secured, you can see up here with uh, sections of uh, rope. I got some cheaper stuff over here, but 
I'm already going to have to replace this. If you're going to or get, use the cheap stuff, make sure you get the, the plain white synthetic nylon braid. Because you can see down here, there's some green dye from the uh, rope. And I definitely don't want that getting on my mushrooms, so I'm going to replace that. But for the moment, you see I just have it, the rope space so I can slide a bag in here. And then it holds both sides of the bag, so there's, you see, there's no way it's gonna fall out of the, even if the whole shelf shelf tipped over accidentally somehow, you could probably just pick it up and won't have to rearrange it too much. So, I hope this idea works out. It'll be a few days before I see how it goes. I got one of these uh, foam rings on a bag that was already, you know, starting for the fruit so hopefully I'll get some results off that quick so uh, we'll check out in a few days see how this does and hopefully it'll be the perfect method because it, the foam is cheap it's easy to cut and uh, I think it just overall will be better than those PVC rings <laughs>